Hi, my name is Katie Ziskind. I'm the owner of Wisdom Within Counseling and Coaching. We have locations in Connecticut in person, and then I'm licensed in multiple states as a marriage therapist. As well, I'm a Gottman II marriage therapist, and I am a sex therapy certified informed professional. So I specialize in sex and intimacy issues, whether that's painful sex, dissatisfying sex, or sex that feels like an obligation where there's no emotional presence. Um, and so I help you build a meaningful, passionate, erotic sex life and get sexually confident and comfortable talking about sex. So if you're in a sexually avoidant cycle, feeling sexually frustrated, wishing sex was more frequent, and also struggling with emotional issues or unresolved conflicts and anger in your marriage, I would love to help you build both emotional intimacy and sexual intimacy. You can book your free phone consultation at Wisdom Within ct.com that's wisdom within ct.com this video is all about the five types of intimacy so when we look at building intimacy it is not just penis and vagina sex intimacy is not just physical touch or sex it is often culturalized for us to think about intimacy in that way but intimacy is into me you see so into me, you see, it's letting your partner in and you also being accepting, forgiving, loving, and emotionally attuned to your partner. So what does it mean to let your partner in? First of all, it means going deep and sharing and taking risks and talking about emotions and expressing your feelings. And then also having your partner be receptive, emotionally validate you and be attuned to your emotional sensitivities. So emotional intimacy is the first of our five realms of intimacy. Emotional intimacy is a foundational building block for sexual intimacy and erotic connection. So if you want to have a better sex life and more frequent sex and more emotionally connected sex, we need emotional intimacy. So emotional intimacy means having bonding conversations, conversations that promote a sense of security, reassurance, and emotional safety, rather than create more insecurity or uh, are reactive or are rooted in anger, yelling, criticism, or blaming. So if you and your partner get into conflicts where you're raising your voice, you're speaking very quickly, you're yelling, there's a level of tension and intensity, we need more emotional intimacy. Emotional intimacy is when you both trust that you will be seen, heard, valued, and appreciated. And this allows you both to express your sexuality with each other. So, um, at Wisdom Within Counseling, I talk about these levels of intimacy. Uh, another level of intimacy or facet of intimacy is the physical realm. So this could be holding hands, this can be coming behind your partner when they're washing the dishes and wrapping uh, your arms around their belly. This could be kissing your partner's neck. This could be holding your partner's forearm as you're walking into a shop together or sitting on the couch next to each other rather than sitting on opposite chairs. Uh, forms of non-sexual physical touch are very important in, for, in terms of showing affection and helping both of you feel loved and important as well, we have sexual intimacy as a facet. So sexual intimacy can be a bridge from physical touch, and this is where desire begins to develop. Both of you start to feel a sense of connection to each other through this touch, and that can excite certain areas of your body. Sexual touch brings blood flow and circulation on a biological level to your genitals. Uh, you can feel excited, you can feel significant, you can feel wanted and desired. Um, sexual touch also means gaining sex positive education. It means talking with your partner and saying, how do you like the touch I'm giving you? Does this type of touch feel really good? How is the pressure? If your partner is touching you in a way that's uncomfortable or painful, positive sexual intim intimacy also means speaking up and saying, I would really like your touch to be more gentle. It's at a nine and I would like your touch to be at a four. Would you mind bringing your pressure from a nine to a four? If your partner is touching you in a way that's too fast, right? Speed of touch also makes a difference. You could say the speed of your touch is at a nine and I really need the speed of your touch to be slower at a five. And have a sense of connection and communication when it comes to what type of physical touch and sexual touch is pleasurable and enjoyable. 
when we look at sexual touch, we want it to be enjoyable. We want it to be fun. We want it to be emotionally engaging. We want both of you to be playful. That is the key to creating more physical and sexual touch and intimacy in your relationship. Um, physical touch can also be cuddling, being the big spoon or the little spoon. It can be showering together. Sexual touch can be taking a bath together, going in a hot tub together, flirting. So this is a very important aspect of intimacy. And when I work with couples, typically uh, you're, you might be stuck in a sexless marriage. You might not be having adequate or frequent uh, sexual intimacy and physical touch altogether may be non-existent. You may feel like two ships passing in the night or that you're stuck in parenting mode or that you both are in roommate syndrome in your marriage and you're stuck being roommates um, and living in the same house, but there's no physical touch or sexual intimacy and you want to bring it back. So I specialize in helping couples do that. Also, when we look at intimacy, we're looking at uh, recreational intimacy. So this is time spent together. What do you guys like to do in your free time when you're not working, when you're not parenting, when you're not caring for other people? Maybe you like to go on a bike ride on a sunny day. Maybe you both like to read out loud to each other. Maybe you enjoy going for a walk outside with your dogs or going for a hike and enjoy being in nature together, going to the beach together. Perhaps you two have a favorite sport or activity you enjoy like swing dancing or line dancing or ballroom dancing. Maybe there is a hobby like pickleball that you enjoy together. But I want you to think about quality time um, as an important form of intimacy together and shared hobbies are necessary for a healthy, thriving marriage. So another facet to intimacy is having time and shared hobbies together. So you do have to do things that you both enjoy. So these are hobbies that your couple bubble um, grows stronger from both of you participating in. Um, so when we look at intimacy, it is dynamic, it's complex, and it's multifaceted, meaning you might be great at parenting together. You might be awesome at um, cognitive intimacy, which we'll get into in just a minute, but you might not be very good at the sexual intimacy, or you might need professional help with the physical touch. So that's pretty normal. Sometimes we're stronger in certain areas than others. And it's good to know when you need help, when you want to grow together and stay together. Now let's talk about cognitive intimacy or intellectual intimacy. So this is where both of you are listening to the same podcast and critically talking about it afterwards, or you're attending a workshop, a conference, or a new training together to gain education on a cognitive level. You both may be business partners and share a business or really do well in managerial roles. Cognitive intimacy really means you both share organizational skills. You may both share a strong work ethic. You both may really enjoy thinking critically about subjects like philosophy, religion, politics. Cognitive intimacy is a wonderful form of intimacy and it can be very fulfilling. You both may read the same book and want to talk about each chapter and really want to engage on a thought provoking level. And it can be fulfilling, it can be rewarding and bonding. But we can't just have sexual intimacy. We can't just have emotional intimacy. And we can't just have cognitive or recreational intimacy. We actually need the healthy balance of all of these five levels of intimacy. And we want to be uh, thinking of each of these levels of intimacy and types of intimacy as ingredients in a healthy, successful, and long-term love life and marriage. So if you notice that you might be great at cognitive intimacy and do well running a business together or enjoy learning things together, but sex is avoidant, you don't have a good sex life, neither of you are touching or holding hands or French kissing anymore, and you wanna rebuild your sexual expression together, I would love to help you do so. I help couples who are feeling distant, who need emotional intimacy, who need help with sexual intimacy, and what this does is it builds a secure, loving, connected bond in your marriage. Through more emotionally open and emotionally vulnerable and emotionally expressive conversations, you can feel more secure in your marriage bond and through more sexual passion, through sexual playfulness and pleasurable, enjoyable sexual experiences, you can also feel more connected and bonded. So if you're interested in rebuilding your emotional and sexual intimacy in your love life and in your marriage bond, I'd love to support you. I specialize with couples. 
I'm a certified sex therapy informed professional. I'm a Gottman level two marriage therapist. I'm licensed as a marriage therapist. I'm a relationship coach. I would love to support you both. And we often don't get a safe place to talk about sex. If anything, we learn that sex is taboo, that it's dirty, and to push away sexual urges from a young age and have sex with the lights off and as quick as possible. So part of our process together is getting familiar, comfortable, and confident talking about sex and helping you both have a sense of connection to your sexual identity and sexual self. So you can book your free phone consultation at wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com. I hope you enjoyed this video all about the five types of intimacy.